Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Uh, we've been talking about account schedules, and this is the second video on that topic. Um, and what I'm going to get into today is more of refining the account schedule for a particular purpose and taking a look at the column layouts. Um, so I am logged in as the account manager and in that role center if you go into the analysis tab on the ribbon I can click on account schedules. Of course you can look it up on the search um, up here on the right hand corner but uh, but that's also a way to get to it. Um, so I get a list of account schedules. I'm going to create a new one and this one is going to be called um, revenue. Uh, actually, it's going to be the uh, profit for retail. Okay, let's just do PFR profit for retail. And the default column layout is going to be balance only, just like before. And I go into edit account schedule. So if I'm going a little bit fast on this one, you can take a look at the previous video where I'm actually going through how to create this. I'm going to insert GL accounts. And I'm only interested in this case uh, in retail accounts. So I'm going to take here the sales retail. Okay. And I am going to take in the cost of retail. So retail is everything else. Obviously, there is a lot of stuff in here. But I'm only going to worry about these two. OK, so I brought in the sales of retail, cost of retail. Obviously, sales of retail minus cost of retail should give me the profit, the gross profit of retail. Um, if I click here on overview, now I can see I have um, the actual amounts in here. So let's uh, let's add in the uh, profit, the gross profit. So I'm gonna just put that as uh, eighty thousand. Um, actually, let me put eighty thousand and just leave that open here to give a line. 80,001, gross profit. So here, um, I want to use a formula. So I haven't used that before. I just used posting accounts out of the chat accounts. But we can actually use a lot of different things um, as rows. And uh, in this case, I like to use the formula. What the formula does, it references anything that's on the, the account schedule. So you can see that all of the lines here are numbered and well, at least the lines that have amounts. And so I can reference them in my formula. So in this case, what I want to do is reference the total sales or retail, which is 44,500, 44,500 plus the total cost of retail, 54,900. Now, why am I plussing this? Um, if you would think that the way to go with this would be to take the total sales minus total cost, and then you have profit. But this is coming straight from the chart of accounts. So the total sales are actually going to be negative, and the total cost is going to be positive. And so if we add that up, uh, we get the difference. And if, that, if the revenue is more than the cost, then it's going to be negative, uh, which is a good thing <laughs> in accounting. Uh, but let's take a look at that if it actually works. So I click here on overview and you can see we have gross profit and it's negative, which is good because the sales is 1.8 million, the cost is 1.4 and then we have a profit positive of 332,000. Now we would like to see all numbers that are good positive uh, and any credits per se uh, be negative. So 
for example, all of this, all of these are good sales, even though they're showing up negative, um, because they're credits. That's why they're negative. Um, so how can we flip the sign around to make it more user friendly? And I would like to flip the sign around on this one too, because a positive profit is a good profit. So I'll go back here, and I showed this actually in the previous video as well. I can just go ahead and show opposite sign on all of the sales, like that. Uh, some people don't like to have it like that. They actually like to see the true value from accounting. But I think in most cases you want to see the uh, positive as being good or normal and negative being sort of a, a reversal. And then on the gross profit we turn that around as well. Uh, the cost will leave as is. And what I'm going to do here to make this a little bit nicer, I'm just going to put this as uh, underline. And I want to bold the gross profit. Um, and then we go ahead and hit overview. So the underline is not going to show in this, but if you print it out, it will. Um, so that's okay. Uh, and now we actually have a, a sale and cost and gross profit. And the numbers look nice. Okay, so what I was going to go into here now is a different column layer than just balance. Uh, click out of here and go into edit, edit column layout. So what that does, it actually brings a lot of the standard column layouts here and we have a lot of them in the uh, with the demo company. I'm going to create a new one so, so I can explain how this works. So I just create new and I'm going to say that this is a uh, net change. So net change and also, actually, let's put uh, year to date and previous year to date or period to date. Okay, so. And if I go into here, add column layout. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to show the net change for a period. And then I want to see the year to date for those accounts. So if we're looking at one month, I will see that month. And I can also see all the year up until that month. So we call the first one net change. And all I have to do here is leave it at net change. I have options right here. And then I have another one called year to date. Um, I'll just keep it as year to date. And in here, I want to actually change this to say balance at date. Okay, so the, since these are uh, income statement accounts, the year to date is going to be the balance at date because we've closed the previous year. Um, and so we wouldn't see any numbers from there. Okay. So we'll just see last change year to date. I'll just hit OK on that. So this is going to be this one. I'm going to hit OK. So if I actually go ahead and hit overview now, I see this and I can now change the column layout to be the one I just created, this one. And now you can see that if I look at the particular month, which is uh, January, I can see that that is uh, that. And then the year to date is much more. If I go to the next period, in this case, actually, you can see that it, it makes more sense to look at something in 2017. If we look at 2018, this is the demo company, it's obvious that 2017 has not been closed because the year to date is bigger <laughs> than that change. So interesting thing to tell uh, Microsoft. 
But uh, if I go into previous period here, I can see that things work perfectly. And uh, so that was for this video. Um, I'll probably keep going on the account schedules. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As always, we welcome any questions or suggestions. Um, so leave comments or, of course, if you can subscribe, that would be awesome. Uh, we are trying to build our fan base over here at Anacta. And uh, if you want to look for further information, please go to anacta.com.